welcome to the 8020 show presented by your host Jason Yee. Hello and welcome back. Sorry for the technical difficulties on the first attempt here. Um, today, well, first off, I'm Jason. This is Train 2.0. The goal here is to create a system of drills, feedback, coaching, advice that just works, that just works for players, um, that gives players the magic mechanics, the magic formulas to really truly unlock their magic um, much faster than they would otherwise. So that's the goal. That's what we're here to do. Today we're talking about um, NHL blade profiling secrets. Um, and uh, this is part podcast. So for those that are listening on podcast, I'm going to do my best to describe it visually as I am drawing it. Now, of course, if you're listening to the podcast, you might want to listen because I'm going to cover some ideas and some thinking here um, that might. And I also suggest that you come back and, and then check out the, the visual parts uh, on my handy whiteboard here. So uh, that's what I'd suggest. Um, how's the volume? How's the quality this time around? Um, YouTube's telling me it's, it's decent quality. Oh, now YouTube just told me it's shit quality. So I don't know what's going on here. Can you guys, if you're watching, let me know how the quality is. Might, today might not be the day. We'll see here. Apologies to anyone listening on the podcast. This I'm sure is boring as I'm sorting out the technical difficulties here. I don't know. I'm just going to talk in and out better. Ugh. I don't know what's going on. I have all the presets the exact same. Um, like maybe we everyone tweet at Shaw Cable and tell them to speed it up. Because that's about the only thing that I can imagine is going on here. Anyway, um, I'm just going to kind of talk for a bit here and assume... I'm going to check the upload speed. And um, then I'm going to assume that everyone's on and everything's working. And I'll just kind of plow ahead with it. Oh yeah, the upload speed is ungodly slow. But it seems to be picking up, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, everyone's gonna quit streaming in my building. Okay, well, it, I, it actually looks on YouTube like the health has picked up here. Uh, getting some more people on. So, we'll start talking about blade profiling. Okay, first off, I'm not qualified to really talk about blade profiling. I don't know very much. Uh, it seems kind of like dark magic to me. Um, but I will, in this um, talk, tell you what I do know, okay? So here's what we know about a skate, okay? It is, on the bottom, it's got some kind of curve like this, right? So you see all sorts of kind of BS about, um, you know, should you have a forward rocker or a backward rocker? Or something like this. It's like, oh, this one's for forwards, this one's for defensemen. I don't think that that works too well. And here's why. Because I was just kind of getting my skates sharpened regularly. And my uncle, who's known to have some like um, strong opinions, that, that uh, it was telling me about maximum edge. And I was like, pfft. No, I'm telling you, no, no big deal. Like skate sharpening, skate sharpening, doesn't matter. 
And that was like, I don't know, maybe like 16 at the time. He's telling me, no, 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 maximum edge. They're the thing. They're the thing. But I'm going, it's not. It can't be the thing, right? It's, it's, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's nothing. It doesn't matter. I've, I've had my blades profiled this way. I've had my blades profiled that way. It just kind of threw me off. I didn't really like it. Um, I just wanted, you know, my guy to sharpen my skates and, and that's that. Okay. Then I tried maximum edge and what it is from what I understand is a system to get consistent results. And I'll explain what those consistent results are in a bit, but um, the system that gives you consistent results. The main thing is that it's consistent. Um, you're getting the same thing every time. And then because it's consistent, it's, you know, reliable, then you can make little tweaks and it's, they're predictable tweaks. So that's kind of the value of the, um, yeah. So I, I think that's the value of, of, of the, their system. Okay. Then you start getting into like, I don't know, I've seen some stuff on YouTube, I've seen some images about forward rocker, backwards rocker. It doesn't really make sense to me. Here's why. Because when we look at the, the blade, what you're, the curvature that you're measuring is a radius, right? And what they mean by radius, I believe, or the, you know, they call it the profile, right? But essentially, if we were to take the bottom part of the curve and kind of take that curvature and then continue it like this, it would kind it would end up being a circle like like so, right? So you have that circle. Can you guys see that all right? Okay. Um, and the blade would kind of just be like this thing here. Right, and then there's your skate, or I guess maybe I'll put it right side up. So you know you'd have your skate blade here, like that. That's my rendition of a skate. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm trying to maybe I'll turn off the light. So. I know I'm not as well illuminated, but now this is better illuminated. So this is your skate blade, the blue thing here. The green thing represents the um, circle. And now, now I've scaled it down. So there's your circle there, okay? Um, so kind of, I need to figure some sort of something out to make that less shiny. Anyway, um, so this is kind of what we're looking at here. This is the, the profile, so to speak. So then you hear people say, okay, what is your profile? So when you, when you break it down, the more, the bigger the circle, the flatter the blade, right? So if you say it's an 11 foot, what you're really saying is that, you know, this this is 11, the, the size of the circle would be 11 feet, right? And as a result, the circle gets bigger and turn your light, should I turn it off? Turn off your light. Is it easier with the light off? There, it seems to be easier. Okay. Um, so if I have a, if I end up with a bigger circle, right? Now, instead of being like this, the circle, as you can imagine for all you calculus people, is now bigger. As a result, the blade is flatter, right? Oh, turn it towards me. Um, I wish that was possible. It's not really one of those lights that you direct. So let me, let me know if this looks good. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, so the bigger the circle, the flatter the blade. That's the, the concept that I'm trying to get at here. So 
what maximum edge does. So so anyway, it now doesn't really make sense to me if someone's saying, "Oh, I have a forward rocker," because, or actually, I'll show you what maximum edge does. So what they end up having is they have a tool. They have a tool that basically looks exactly like this. And it's, and it's kind of this curved tool. And what they, do, what, what they essentially do is they place it up against the blade and then they look to see if there's any gaps, right? So if there's like a gap here and like a gap here, right? As the blade rockers, right, back and forth, there might be a uh, like a place where so should I get rid of the light or not because I don't have really that option of just simply directing it is that better I'm trying different things here let me know if that's better um, so anyway so if, let me know if this is better guys so if if what happens at the end of the day is, because what you hear often is, is people say, oh, I have like an attacking blade or something or other. That doesn't really make sense to me. Like is the idea that your blade is like, um, like, because if the idea is that, that your blade is round, right? The idea is that this tool sits here like so on, on the on the blade and then and then any gaps in between here indicate a spot where it's off rocker right turn my whiteboard a little that's a good idea there that seems to be better doesn't it so this is kind of how the this the system works from how these maximum edge people, these gurus at maximum edge, um, described it to me. Like I said, I'm not qualified to really be discussing this. I don't know much. So in fact, if people know more than me, please fact check me and correct me. Um, but mostly what I see when it comes to the blade profiling is a bunch of, I don't know, the most, you know, the same old stuff you see in hockey, just kind of mumbo jumbo. Um, that doesn't, that it seems like good in theory, but I don't think actually works. Anyway, so, so you have this radius. From what I understand, and like I said, my followers are smarter than me, so you guys can let me know. If I all of a sudden decide I'm going to like pitch the blade forward somehow by having it like, I don't know, I don't even know how you'd really do that, but you'd have it... Uh, like angled forward, so the radius is somewhere in front, right? Like something like this. It's deeper here, but shallower here. That seems to me like at, that's right, a profiling template. That's what it's called. So if you have this kind of thing going on, it seems to me like you have different places, different levels of contacts, like different amounts of blade on the ice. And maybe some people like that, I don't know. But when I tried it, it really didn't work for me. And, um, and the reason being, I think, was because it just wasn't consistent across the entire skate. Whereas, whereas the, um, if it's just simply consistent and you can tweak your profile up and down, then you can have a very kind of predictable um, pitch on on your blade. You can choose whether you're going to be further back or further forward. Um, so this is kind of what I what I understand um, about profiling. And like I say, I um, don't really don't trust me and don't listen to my advice or anyone else's. Experiment for yourself. In my experimentation, I was a hundred percent a skeptic of blade profiling. Um, until I use Maximum Edge's system. So I'd love for like, um, you know, me, like, like I said, and, and, and I think the proof, 
that this works is the fact that I think all NHL teams have their trainers trained by Maximum Edge. Like, not not some, like, all of them. Um, and Aaron's saying that Maximum Edge also uses a finishing polish on the blade so it isn't rough. Um, yeah, they have a whole system, and, and what I found is that their edges are truer. They're always equal. Like, they're always equal. Um, I don't know what system... Um, they, I, I don't know. I don't know what system they use. That's, that's part of their secret, I guess. Um, but it's, uh, it really works. It's, uh, it's really quite good. Um, I found, and like I said, it's the consistency and then the ability to play up and play down your profile. The pitching thing, I think is some sort of concocted voodoo stuff to, to sell stuff. Blade matching. What does blade matching mean? Um, yes. So I'm hoping that was kind of like a visual enough description for, for podcast listeners. But um, so I think essentially that's the secret, I think. And, and I, 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 uh, I said it's this, the NHL secret because I don't think that's too much of a stretch if all NHLers are skating on tr- on skates that have been sharpened by trainers who have been sharpened by maximum edge i'd say that's the secret i don't get any money from them um i haven't even been to them in years because um it's hard for me to 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 access so i'm basically skating around right now um literally on the edge all the time because i got uneven edges and uneven profile but when i was playing i was absolutely anal about having my skates done by maximum edge and when that couldn't happen i did (laughs) call some like plastic manufacturers to see if i could make my own um profiling template and uh they kind of they were like what is this guy doing um yeah so that was that's kind of my understanding of profiling um, and the fact that the NHL is using the system. I'd love someone to, to fact check me on this. I feel like Satoshi would, would know if, uh, um, if I'm correct or not on this uh, presumption about the NHL trainers. Um, uh, like, but I think that's what it is. So, so the reason I'm, I'm saying I think this is all there is to it is because um, Aaron has kind of talked to me about um, uh, another company, I think in New Jersey. And then I also, I think, I think um, Brian uh, texted me about this as well and said, have you heard of this company? I think they're called No Icing. Is that, that's correct. And then there's like this sheet of like a gajillion different options. Um, but I don't really, in my experience, you don't need a gajillion options. You just need to dial in your your blade profile like there's really just two variables that's it i don't think you need to i don't think you need to worry about flat bottom v i don't think you need to worry about the z cut or whatever um and i don't think you need to worry about forward pitch backward pitch mixed pitch i don't think those things matter i uh, the only thing i found to matter are your radius right the sharpness and and the profile and so i found that my optimal profile is like a nine and a half and a one inch that's it that's it um and once i got those two numbers and give them the maximum edge they do it right every time i know what i'm getting every single time um so i think there's less numbers and less variables required than you think to get um consistent performance that's my hypothesis i'd be and like I said, I haven't really been experimenting with this um, recently, so um, I'd love for those of you who are still tweaking this area to let me know um, if my hypothesis is correct. New Hampshire, sorry. They're based on a Swedish company that believes in mechanics enhanced with profile. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, and then, like, I mean, and then you get to the whole, like, so I'll tell you my, like, so, so the, the similar idea with the skate profile is the stick. And I'll tell you my thinking, too. Like, I got into skiing this winter, and, you know, my friend is like, hey, you should get your skis waxed and sharpened. You'll love it. And I was like, no. <laughs> I don't want to know yet what wax and, sk and sharpened skis feel like because I just want to be happy with what I have. As soon as I start worrying about the sharpness and the, the, the waxing and the blah, blah, blah from my skis, then I'm screwed because then I'm just going to obsess over it. So I'd rather just not know for a while. And then when I have, you know, the time to, to, to fuss with this stuff, then I'll take care of that. And in fact, I know that if I just simply improve my mechanics skiing, right? Um, then I'll get to a point where the, the, the sharpness and the wax actually matters. Same thing for the skating profile. Like I said, right now, I'm on a... Like, if you were to look at my skates, if I were to go grab them right now, you'd be like, what the hell? Like, if we had the Maximum Edge guy here to look at them, they'd say, these are junk. These are horrible. Like, you got no edge here. You know, you're missing a big gap here. That's what they'd tell me. Um, and, you know, I'm... Sh but the thing here is that in order for me to be... To not fall over, my mechanics need to be precise. Um, my weight shifts, my control needs to be precise. Um, you know, maybe there's the argument to be made that um, if my blades were profiled, then my learning curve would be quicker, I'd pick it up faster. But then there's also the counter argument, which is that, um, you know, by having kind of slightly unpredictable <laughs> edges, you know, you need to be, um, your mechanics need to be more dialed in. Um, of course, if I was performing like at a high level, um, consistently, I'd want consistent skates, so I had completely predictable performance. But I'm not, um, so I'm okay with with having kind of eh, kind of sketchy <laughs> skates and focusing on the mechanics first. So again, you know, body mechanics uh, trump everything. Um, so uh, again, like if we're if we're optimizing. The, the skate profile or the skate mechanics, I don't think that's going to automatically optimize your body mechanics much the same way I don't believe that optimizing your stick length mechanics then backwards optimizes your body mechanics. It doesn't work that way. I've never seen it work that way. Um, and you, know, you might see temporary short-term improvements, um, but it's not a pervasive long-term improvement. Um, and that pervasive long-term improvement comes from magic mechanics from your own body mechanics um so that's kind of like my 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 overall take on on it and that's why i'm using kind of semi sketchy blades right now ah, they're like fully sketchy the steel is very thin <laughs> the edges are very um wonky i'm sure um and the profile sucks and um but i have to be very very precise with my movement um like I said, I don't know what, what is the, I could be right. I could be wrong. Um, I'd be interested to hear others opinions. Now, Dan is watching. Dan said he has a question for me. Um, but I don't, I haven't heard the question yet, but maybe he's waiting for me. And I know Tom is watching. And I think he had a question or maybe I'm mistaken. So I will, I will text Dan and let me know if, if what I'm saying is completely off base. Um, maybe I'm missing something. Very likely I'm missing something because I told you I'm not really qualified to talk about this. This is just my um, thinking on the, on the issue. So let me know if I'm off base, if I'm watching. Ross is watching. Ross, do you have any questions? Like I said, the, uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so what would be the best drill for, oh, it's a personal question. Uh, um, 
right now for you, Dan, I would say, so Dan is one of the members. He's um, sending me video clips almost daily, hey? And um, we're kind of, we're, we're, we're working on them together. Like we've seen huge improvements. And um, I'd say now take the linear and, and uh, circular source code skating drills and add a puck to it and connect hands to feet. That would be your next step. Yeah, sorry, Ross. Sorry about the, the technical um, difficulties. By daily. <laughs> uh, yeah. By daily um, things. So here's what I'm looking for. when when If you're a member and you have access to the source code drills or and if you're doing them, um, the first thing we're looking for is are you getting pressure through your heels on your inside and outside edges? And we have the exact exercises to do to get those. Okay, the second thing you're going to look for is, um, or and once we have that on both edges through our three three key movements, then we um, add the puck. And the key to that is connecting the connecting the hands to the heels. Um, and then we move on to the next level. And you're going to get to a point where basically all movements in hockey, you can remain connected through your hands and feet. And you then end up with a guy like Austin Matthews. Um, that would be the progression. Thoughts on Sydney's goal last night. Mechanics on that are crazy. Yes, I comment. I made a, the Instagram uh, an Instagram post talking about that. Um, the things you'll see is he uses the pendulum effects to great effect, um, creating that momentum, that circular momentum, and pushing through his heel, attaching his heel to his hand. And, you know, this that's really the key, the secret to um, all those one-handed shots, you know, the Kovalev one-handed shot and the Forsberg or and Crosby, these one-handed shots. The only way they can do that, because no one's wrist strength is that strong, no one's, the only way they can do that is if they connect their heels to their hands. And if they do that through rotating their hips, um, your, their, hips is, their hip is the link between heels and hands. And that is Crosby's secret there. But also every NHLer's secret. And the players who use that more often are going to have more power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dan's saying he only scored that goal because of stick length. Where's the guy who came in and told me that science says that all NHLers have, I think, sorry, I'm invoking my own cognitive dissonance because I use the um, extreme absolute. Um, with, you know, he said something along the lines of like, most NHL Hall of Famers have short sticks, ergo, to be a Hall of Famer, you must have short sticks. Um, I think that's a, what do we call that? That's a that's a reasoning fallacy or or um, uh, yeah reasoning reasoning fallacy something like that. Let me know what it's actually called. Um, where you think correlation equals that's not the case, but correlation equals causation. That's another fallacy that he made, and I was actually very gracious in trying to tell him he was wrong. But where is he? I wonder where he is. Um, because, I mean, you just point to a few anomalies who have long sticks. And Datsuk, probably the guy with the best mechanics. Um, alive. And the most complete mechanics. And um, kind of got a mute point there. Yeah, so it was only because of his stick length. Certainly, I've been... as. As my mechanics have shifted, I've been thinking more and more about my stick length, wondering if, if um, you know, a, a different stick length would make things easier for me and, and curve and lie and blah blah blah. But again, don't 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 op, don't early optimize your stick mechanics. Um, in fact, more variability early on while you're optimizing your mechanics is probably better. Questionable cause fallacy is that the is that the fallacy that he was committing? Um, that's also like the 
the, the, I think the fallacy I was meaning was, um, you know, all swans are white. Let's just say all swans are white. Um, swans are birds. Ergo, all birds are white. I think that, that that's one of the re um, reasoning fallacies that sort of he was committing, I, I think. Um, again, I'm not really smart enough to know, so. I really would like need my textbook to make sure I'm 100% correct on that. <laughs> Um, can I briefly explain my top tips pointers for building more speed? Um, yeah, essentially my top, see my top tip, well, I mean, there's like a few ways to approach it. The first way is like, if you want to get faster, like, okay, let's train for six weeks. Let's, um, you know, get you doing some, some of the lifts I know work hundred percent um and bang more speed no matter your skating technique um but then and then you know we, so that is kind of like the uh, the mechanical side or the i shouldn't say mechanical but like the force production side of it uh, but then there's actually adjusting your mechanics um which is the next part um which would be which is going to temporarily make you slower um, if you're not used to the, the mechanics of, um, that, that I'd show you, which would, um, like I say, would make you, make you slower. And what I'd suggest is that, uh, you know, you're not actually after speed. You're probably actual, actual, uh, after precision and control, which is comprised in the, in the magic mechanics. Um, when you have that precision and control, then adding speeds through increase speed through increased power and strength um, is going to be uh, beneficial. So I kind of didn't really answer your question, I think, but um, I hope it gives insight into the process I would use if you came to me and said what you did. You know, how would you skate faster? I'd say, do you? I'd question the assumption that you actually do need to skate faster. And then, you know, provide kind of a roundabout route to give you what you want and then also make you skate faster in the long run. Um, so I'm hoping that that question makes sense, Ross. I don't mean to sidestep the question. That That's just my thought process. Um, Overgeneralization. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Like, the, the, here's the... So he was invoking a, a scientific argument. Did that really throw things off? No. Um, no, 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 no. I don't know if anyone's interested in, in what I'm about to say here. But I'm drawing up the old, my understanding, and I would love someone who's of science mind to check my math. Um, I don't know. Are, are you guys waiting for me to actually say this? I don't actually know if this is valuable for me to talk about. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know quickly. Otherwise, I'm going to take off here because I have a pressing phone call. If you're on and you want me to answer a question before I go, you might want to ask that now. Otherwise, I'll probably end up with a bunch of texts <laughs> from you guys after. 
Is the slow player really extinct? Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I think I think so. Anyway, I gotta run. Um, this seems to be an urgent call. So, thank you guys for watching. Here's the outro. Thank you for watching and listening to the 8020 show hosted by Jason Yee. Be sure to check out more at train2.0.com.